Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Digby. This is going to be BSL Season 12 Trobe League, where you're closing out Group D. Do Life is going to once again be playing Laser Snipe. So Turret advances. Uh, Baya actually had, I think it was Baya in the Losers match, gave a walkover to Snipe. So Snipe has another opportunity to make it into the round of eight. He's starting in the upper right-hand corner as the blue Protoss left-hand corner with the stylish green it is do life and this is on power bond which i always feel like i should reveal because it seems like power bond gets played less often it has that command center which shouldn't be an aspect i still want to see this captured by zerg player as a strategic cheese advantage like after hive i'm wondering how they can pull off anyway standard natural expansion uh gas expansion over here across that bridge but also has another entry point right here um, kind of four entry points and also like another one protected up to the north. I feel like this is one of those more defensive macro oriented maps which leads to more arbiter play, leads to more um, Terran just shelling up off three bases rather than going for that 2-1 push, although the 2-1 push tends to be golden. Absolutely gold these days. See Supply Depot being produced here, a pylon alongside to produce extra. I believe with this placement, the probes hold a stronger line so it actually improves mineral mining a little bit. I remember thinking that sometimes placing the gateway somewhere around this can disrupt that though, so we'll see. StarCraft has so many, that's one thing with StarCraft, is I wonder if there would be a way, if I was gonna talk about one piece of improvement, I feel like if there was some sort of visual mechanism that they could apply around some of the hitboxes and whatnot to let you know when things were wall or when it was disruptive. I feel like that would be a little bit... Like, keep all the mechanics there, because that would fundamentally change the game. But what if there was kind of like a color coding here that let you know, like, okay, this is red when it comes across here, or this turns green or whatever not, or this is yellow as far as different, like, unit sizes and whatnot. So to make it a little bit easier on players, especially new players. Anyway, cybernetic score warping in. Does not well. We'll have to see once Laser Snipe has initial. He's not going for the initial zealot because this is a three-player map. He wants to go ahead and get that dragoon off. We do see Do Life moving out. His SCV scout's going to go to that bottom right-hand corner. He, in the meantime, has three SCV on gas. We'll see if he pulls it off after factory. He's not producing an initial marine, actually yet. So potentially wanting to play this a little bit more economically stringent. Try to get every early game advantage he can. It looks like Laser Snipe is moving out with his probe. So now the marine being produced after that factory, really wanting to get that factory out rapidly, and has moved that SCV, two SCVs back to minerals, which usually means that we're going to see a one factory into expansion build, at least as an initial setup. It is possible he's going to adjust that after he gets the scouting information he's looking for. Dragoon on the way. We also see range being upgraded. So everything looking just about standard, a single Marine on the ramp to try to block this uh, probe out, not quite able to do so able to get a little bit of initial damage, but this probe wandering in, it's going to see a second marine being produced, going to critically see that that SC, single SCV is on gas and wander around, do his action otherwise, and getting wiped out in the mineral line, so not getting a lot of additional information. And actually, there was a cancellation, interestingly. Oh, never mind, that second marine went to the edge, and we're seeing a third marine being produced, and we are seeing a machine shop, which suggests, yeah, we're going to see, see you know tanks siege to expansion, laser snipe, I think got a good read on that, so he's going to go ahead and have that initial Dragoon try to chase down this SCV that got its amount of scouting information. It's heading towards the front. Try to do a little bit of disruption, maybe stop a command center, but he's going to grab a Nexus as well. And maybe with these two Dragoons, this is sometimes where Protoss players can sneak a little bit of advantages if they can try to delay that command center as long as possible. Uh, harass these Marines, things like that. But running in and getting some free fire damage, trying to fire uphill isn't the way to do it. He is going to have range... So it's going to take these Marines and that Siege Tank pressing out and potentially a bunker on the front door before Do Life is really going to feel absolutely secure. Already lifting off that barracks to go scouting across that 12. And he's already building that command center inside base. So going to go play the very, very safe economic route. Range just about finished. Second Dragoon is on the front but not pressing forward. So it looks like it's more interested in denying potential additional scouting information. Second Gateway plopping down for laser snipe and see so, yeah this is what i was wondering about is like this here with the every once in a while the mining so it looks like the mining normal a little bit here but this probe pulling off the line we are seeing a robotics facility so three gate robo to follow this up this dragoon being pushed back by that siege tank and marines and i like do life really being aggressive with this to even give the impression that oh okay is this a timing attack and maybe i'm holding some units back behind this the dragoon actually fleeing all the way back towards the front we have two dragoons right there I don't think he's falling for that play. 
We are seeing mines being researched and an additional factory behind this command center. So it looks like what Dulife may be planning to do is at least get in one initial vulture, maybe try to rely on a bit of map control with the mines. Unfortunately, because this robotics facility is up, and I believe this is going to be a robo with the, typically this is robo with the observatory. It's not completely negating that vulture's ability to do map control, but it is going to be a short-term advantage as far as where the mines can be planted and how long they can hold. Currently, I got to get, and okay, so there's the initial vulture able to plant them, but right now, everything working, in my opinion, in laser snipes advantage. He's got that observatory. Well, does he have the observatory yet? Okay, now building the observatory. He's kind of buying himself some time. He's got a decent Dragoon Force up. He has his natural expansion up. He's doing a pretty good job. Uh, macroing is a little bit behind in the overall probe versus SCV count, but he's well. he's got the tech and he's got the positioning where he might be able to follow this up with some good map control positioning where he might even be able to push up on this front. And the one thing for Dulife though is, is he did not build a bunker. He's only got two siege tanks. And I don't even know that he has siege tech research. He's grabbing a third factory now. So he's being pretty risky here, honestly. And he's very, very much relying on these mines. So laser snipe supply capping himself right here, but might have an opportunity to, if he, if he realizes it, to go ahead and press this front door and do a bit of damage there. So right now, do life is just relying on the fact that he has vultures out in the field to be a potential threat to keep laser snipe a little bit more passive. But with the observers that might cancel and he might start pushing out towards the main. The question, the thing is, is laser snipes MO at this stage of things has been to rather than going for aggressive plays. I like what he did here. He only moved two dragoons out to the front to go ahead and clear that, clear those mines to kind of hide his overall dragoon count. Another vulture moving forward, planting a couple of additional mines, the observer making its way forward. And I'm wondering once this observer sees this front and sees three siege tanks unseaged uh, and two vultures, just a handful of Marines and knowing that he's at three gates, two additional factories being planted down, I think this is going to be an attempt at some sort of a timing attack because this is a very late armory without siege check support. And I think with do life going up against the three gateways and potentially a fourth once laser snipe sees it, let's see if he goes ahead and moves out and plants a four factory. He's also got that citadel of a dune down. But I, I do believe that laser snipe has everything he needs to repel this attack. And he's got to see these siege tanks unseaged on the front door. I'm curious now, laser snipe does have options. He can go ahead and try to play passively. Yeah, grabbing two additional gateways upon seeing all this. I think he's going to be absolutely able to smash this as long as he keeps up with his macro and as long as he works with some decent positioning. So that observer seeing absolutely everything. Siege tech just now being, this is siege tech at like eight minutes. This is very late siege tech. Three o'clock base being boxed out by that vulture. The other base being boxed out a little bit by that barracks where the vultures might be able to flood in. But this is a pretty significant amount of dragoons. We are seeing a shuttle being built. I'm not sure if the shuttle is going to be in time for whatever do life's timing is here or not. In the meantime, a lot of vultures just kind of snuck out, planted mines absolutely everywhere to get a good degree of vision and actually kind of like the vision that he's got overall. Uh, nice comsat getting a good look at the Dragoon Force as far as, uh, as far, oops, blanked everybody out there, but he's actually got good map control. I think he's kind of playing against what he thinks Laser Snipe's gonna do historically, which is play a little bit more macro oriented, macro toss uh, versus anything else. Vulture being picked off at that mineral only. Some more vultures looking for a way around. Here's the one thing, though, is with those vultures out in the front, that is a potential threat for Laser Snipe. But all Laser Snipe has to do is, is plant another pylon or two, which he's doing. I love it. I love it when I can be psychic and have those moments and just clog this with two, two Dragoons. And then he's free to go ahead and press forward with his army. He's having a little bit of trouble gathering them right this second, grabbing a couple Zealots right now. I don't, I'm wondering if I missed the Zealot leg speed being upgraded. Usually Zealot leg speed is something you want. Two additional factories here for Do Life. So Do Life really dedicating to this. He's got seven siege tanks on the front, a, a decent grouping of vultures. Some of them still have mines, but this is a formidable grouping of Dragoons. I think Laser Snipe, and, and as long as he stays again on top of production, also getting a Dark Templar, already getting a Arbiter Tribunal. So he's thinking about just going two base Arbiter across. The, but if he smashes this army, He's going to be in a really good position in the mid-game. Weapons 1 about halfway finished here. This is kind of an off-timing Weapons 1. I'm wondering if Dulife missed that armory as far as where he wanted to be in his build. Or if this was just part of the calculation. But that's going to delay it a little bit. So this is going to be more of like a 10-minute uh, timing push. Psystorm, Stasis, Zelt Leg Speed also being upgraded in the background. 
And it looks like Laser Snipe kind of meandering up. He wants to go ahead and take a third base, still only relying on a handful of Dragoons to deal with the Vultures right there. That probe, very likely, well, not going to get taken out. So Laser Snipe, again playing passively, sitting on the third base. And this is giving time for Dewlife to accumulate more tanks to get that level 1 weapons upgrade and potentially smash into him. So he's going to rely on the fact that he just has superior macro and that he's going to, hopefully, he'll have some vision spread across this. I think he would be better suited to kind of spread his army out and get it out in the field so he doesn't end up getting contained. That has, Honestly, that's been an MO for Laser Snipe in a lot of these BSL matches versus Terran in particular, where he goes into these matches, his macro's solid, he ends up with certain economic advantages, that, but then over the long term, he, end, he just has these moments where he ends up getting boxed in by his Terran opponent. Do life on the move! With level one's weapon, level one weapons just finishing. He's also got Charon boosters in the background, just to potentially to deal with arbiters. The vultures being engaged by the dragoon force initially, still regathering. So a handful of vultures taking some damage. There is an observer absolutely pinned on this army. Tanks sieging, so they just again want to kind of hop forward. There are some zealots to the north with that dark templar. I'm not sure if that was comp or spotted out. I think it might have been spotted out by that barracks to the north. The Goliaths there, oh, taking out that shuttle before they were even able to engage. So being a little bit greedy in that regard. In, in that regard, Psystorm is researched, but I do not see any high tempo in the background. So it's going to have to be done all on the ground. And once again, Laser Snipe is at threat of being boxed into his own natural expansion. He's got the Dragoon Army, the Zelts to the north. He does have this army to the south that can sweep in, maybe go for a pincer attack. But he needs to do that while those siege tanks... So it's going to come down to basically do life's ability to kind of slowly and patiently hopscotch his siege tanks forward versus laser snipe's ability to keep on top of the macro and end around and kind of provide some threat. I like that he's moving these dragoons out of position to go ahead and cut off reinforcements. Has the observer alongside, so laser snipe doing a good job. A single vulture sneaking through, realizing that laser snipe is distracted from multiple angles. Do life trying to back up and re-engage these enforcements and laser snipe exiting to the south. Some Loses a single Dragoon. Actually, ate a mine right there as well. But I like what he's doing. He's creating a lot of delay. He's got this third base up. He doesn't have it He doesn't have it mining yet. But the longer this goes on, the more that Do Life is going to have uh, more trouble dealing, first of all, with High Templar, more Zealots, uh, things along those lines. It looks like he's regathering with more Vultures, more Goliaths. Kind of an interesting play where he just pushed up, is now abandoning that, realizing, I guess, potentially he just didn't have enough to quite break through. He was perhaps concerned about that pincer attack. But regathering his troops looks like... Turning around, going back for it, rather than trying to establish a third. Sieging gets one Dragoon. Some mines were cleared right there. And this is a lot of Siege Tanks right now. Level 1 armor is on the way, which makes those Dragoons less effective. Some probes trying to transfer to that 3 o'clock. And Laser Snipe has a bit of a split army. Is he going to have the Psy Storm in position? Those tanks aren't Siege. One Siege Tank is going to get picked off for sure. It looks like a second Siege Tank is going to get picked off as well. Where the There's the army from the north swinging down the Zealots, getting on top of those troops. A beautiful Psy Storm over that, the Vultures in that northern portion of that Siege Tank. That Dark Templar are able to get in. It was taked out, taken out by, I believe, some that Comsat and Psy Storm, but nice cleanup by Laser Snipe. A huge swing of momentum. Not only did he clear that up, he cleared that up beautifully. Excellent engage, and now do life in trouble, because when you are at six factories, you are producing at near its, I don't believe it's complete stopgap, but you're basically not building much of a bank. You're just trying to, although he does have a, a large bank in the background, which just shows you uh, some of the macro action going on. He's going to try to take this command center blind and just rely on the fact that Laser Snipe is not going to oppose it. Laser Snipe, I do believe he has a large enough army where he could do so, and on top of that, Laser Snipe, if he wants to, has enough of an army on the ground where he could take additional base. Also, let's see if he grabs another gateway. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Cough commentary. Uh. <coughs> he also can go ahead and get another Stargate down, get that critical Arbiter uh, Stasis energy up. Some Vultures able to sneak in. Good Cloak to try to save some probes. There's a Comsat. Not going to save a lot of them. I like Do Life doing this backstab attack. And that's going to cause this natural expansion to get flooded. So, first of all, distraction, which is buying do life some time. And also keeping these units back at home base rather than dealing with this natural expansion that's being taken very much exposed. Also doing some economic damage. Do life actually at 55 SCVs compared to the 37 probes otherwise. Laser snipe a little bit boxed in. Playing, again, that standard macroeconomic style. Sitting back, he's going to wait for recall and try to play things that direction. I'm wondering if he's going to start moving out a probe to go for that gorilla style. He has more map control right now. He's not 
as much supply ahead as he wants to be. He's also behind in the overall just raw upgrades here. He's got no weapons upgrade where you've got level 1 weapons upgrade and level 1 armor. So it's a better upgraded army for Dewlife. Dewlife is, a, is economically now established his third base. So I feel like Laser Snipe did a lot in that early portion of the match. And I felt like he had an opportunity to swing it into an advantage. But he did not take an additional fourth base. He did not apply pressure. He did not deny a third. And as a result... I feel like he might have missed a little bit of an opportunity. Now he sees that additional base out there. Let's see if he gets a move on to go for it here. But as a result, I feel like Dewlife has actually managed to keep not just keep himself in this match, but perhaps taken a bit of an advantage between his macro and his upgrades. But this is still a formidable attack force for Laser Snipe of Dragoons and Zealots. He, I'm not seeing a lot of High Templar. There are a handful of High Templar right here. That's a couple of Storms. But critically, not a lot of Arbiters. And Dewlife grabbing yet another base. This, I think, might cost him the match. This critical take right here, because he's doing that when he can't even defend this third base, potentially, between recalls and everything else. Laser Snipe walking into that, some uh, being lifted off, some SCVs pulling off. Great side storm on top of the Vultures, unfortunately catching some of his Zealots as well. The Zealots just melting to that Vulture Force, and you can just see where those size, where those weapons upgrades are absolutely critical. Still no second side storm out of this High Templar, which would be beautiful. But the Command Center taken out overhead, so even losing this army... It is a big win for Laser Snipe. Still, there's this base coming up. I believe it is spotted. I think Laser Snipe with another round of units might be able to make a press against that. However, he is down 40 supply versus Do Life with that exchange. So I take it back. He's not going to be able to apply pressure right here. He needs to get another ground army out. He's got... I'm looking for the Arbiters. He does have an Arbiter out in the field. Some Stasis might be able to buy some, him some time. I think Do Life realizing that Laser Snipe donated a lot of units and taking that command center out. He's starting to press forward. A High Templar getting out. Two High Templar getting taken out, which is, oh, that's a big hit for Laser Snipe. He needed those side storms to engage this, and Do Life being very aggressive, engaging this army head on, trying to keep that unit count low, and he's going to go ahead and barrel in to this inside 3 o'clock location. Siege tanks everything. Does Laser Snipe have enough to defend this? He does have a sizable army. He does have enough for a stasis or potentially even a recall right on top of this army, but he's not getting a move on. And as a result, it looks like these vultures, these siege tanks, Goliaths, everything else, going to be able to wipe out this inside 3 o'clock base. Arbiter right there. Goliaths pressing it back. There's a stasis on some of the forward siege tanks, but there's no army to back it off. So it's grabbed him a little bit of time. Second Arbiter eating a lot of fire there as well. And that's actually two Arbiters taken out. Another re-engagement. Not enough Psy Storm on that High Templar to engage. It looks like finally some side storm missing the siege tanks, just catching a handful of the vultures, but this is allowing the Zelts to get on top of the siege tanks in the second round, so they're going to be able to clear this army out. But is it going to be in time to save the Nexus? The Goliaths are still going after that Nexus. The Nexus is down. So despite all that, it's almost an inverted situation now where now Dewlife donated a lot of his army, but was able to do tit for tat here and wipe out Laser Snipe's economy comparatively. Plus, he's already got this third up and running, so it's going to be three base versus three base, with this base not quite mining yet. Sea Chank's now unmorphing, and actually, uh, with what's left there, Laser Snipe donating some additional units, and might not be able to re- Oh, no, High Templar, get out of there. That's unfortunate. But trying to re-engage right there, two observers seeing this third base that was distance mined being re-established. Anybody's match still, but I'm going to again give the advantage to do life. He's got level two weapons, level two armor. Versus just level 1 weapons comparatively. The supply is slightly in Laser Snipe's advantage. Or sorry, Do Life's advantage. The inside 3 has been taken out. The 3 o'clock base is just now plopping down some cannons to deal with those vultures. So it's basically 4 base, well 3 base, 3 running bases versus 3 bases. Which if you're 1 base up, if you're even on bases, usually that's the Terran lead. And Do Life again up in supply. Natural expansion is looking thin. Main is mined out. But that's 2 additional bases that have been established. Will Do Life be able to maintain? Honestly, all Do Life has to do here is kind of cut the map in half, do a little bit of map control here, keep do uh, Laser Snipe's army small so there's not going to be any backstab recalls. But as I say, he's doing that. He's actually pushing in and taking these additional bases, uh, additional bases out. Laser Snipe just hasn't had the the ground army, the positional awareness to really engage these armies. And plus, with those siege tanks in the background, I don't know that he's going to really be able to reinforce into this. He has some dragoons running headlong. That looks like the Zealots are going to be able to get on top of this. And slowly clear these siege tanks out, but not before that 3 o'clock base is potentially taken out uh, by those vultures. Or at the very least, mining is disrupting here. So a lot... Oof. High Templar getting wiped out. Dragoons getting wiped out. You can just really see those level... Those weapons upgrades 
doing their damage right here. Some Goliaths wandering out of position instead of working on that Nexus. But this inside 3 o'clock Nexus is going to get wiped out. And now Laser Snipe's economy is shattered. He's actually still sitting at 30 probes. This inside 3 is just now warping in. Just in time to be potentially leveled by reinforcements from Do Life. The Bane's mined out. The Natural Expansion's mined out. And now Laser Snipe, with half the supply, he had, oh man, he had so many opportunities, I feel like to get big advantages in this match. He just hasn't been able to close it out. Instead, do life with two mining bases, potentially can grab an additional base. He can do that naked just because of all of the aggression that he can kind of peel out here. And laser snipe kind of fighting for his life. A great stasis right there. Another beautiful stasis. Let's see if laser snipe can capitalize on it. Unfortunately, sometimes stasis can, oh, nice mind drag into those. Units. I think he's still sitting, unfortunately, at a low, yeah, low upgrades. And there, GG, yeah, Laser Snipe just did not have enough with that army getting wiped out, realizing he was economically behind, realizing that there is, even if these stasis, once these stasis wore out, it was just a huge standing army. And he didn't have the Arbiters overhead. Here's the thing, when Protoss is neglecting the armor upgrades, you really need to make sure that you have Arbiters. So those comp sets need to be continuous uh, so that more or less these dragoons etc aren't taking clear shots and there's not the targeting of the the soft dragoon or that gets the critical dragoon line anyway game one going to do life which is disappointing i really want to see laser snipe succeed uh we'll move on to game two hope you guys enjoyed it thanks for listening